Mark, whatever you do, look after your cash and look after your people. And, um, and he said, by and large, everything will, will be okay. And joining me on the line today, I have Mark Riley from T-29. Welcome to the call, Mark. Hey, David. How are you? Yeah, really good. Really good. Maybe uh, it's a bit of a cryptic name for some people, but you might want to explain what your business is all about, who you are, what you do. Yeah, well, I'll come to the uh, the T minus twenty nine bit later. That, but the the crux of what we do as an organisation is help companies that need to win tenders to sustain or grow their business, um, yep. and that comes down to the science and the art of communication by and large. Yep. The T minus twenty nine thing references uh, essentially the time it took me to start my own company. So I, when I started in the workplace in eighty nine, I decided I was going to work for myself, and by and large, I've been counting down. For those 29 years until I launched my business in uh, 2018. So you can blame NASA and uh, the T-minus concept of project management that um, is sort of behind the name. Well, you're taking a lot of time to do your planning, 29 years to start a business, but... Uh... Uh, you've got to be right. You've got to be... Uh, <laughs> I guess it's just the point at which I felt I'd got the diversity yeah. of skills, confidence, desire, the right time in my life, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, fantastic. So tell me, obviously right now we're in a bit of turmoil in terms of the economy. And being a business owner yourself, what are you doing to navigate the current economic environment? Well, look, the premise of my business uh, has, has always been face-to-face -face engagements and being on site in offices and things like that. And obviously that's changed. So the, the fundamental shift I've made is to make everything that I do online. So that's involved investment in technology, investment yep. in learning, um, how to engage with people through the online world and getting to used to the tools of the trade these days around mm -hmm. Zoom meetings like this one and how to remove technology from the, the learning or the instruction or the discovery processes that are involved in running like a business like mine. So um, whilst it's uh, like a lot of people, you, your initial reaction is kind of shock and contraction a little bit. For yeah, me, yeah. the shift in the workplace and the, you know, the loss or the, the dis departure, I guess, of the physical boundaries of the workplace has, has created huge um, opportunity for me. Yeah, just how you re just how you respond, isn't it? It's funny because some people are sort of challenged by the current environment. For us, you know, it's sort of fast track technology and the evolution of what we do into sort of we've just moved from being local to being uh, pretty much a global player. I guess I mean we're lucky in that you know I feel for other businesses who literally just stopped. You know, there's and you kind of that's a whole other proposition to to sort of pivot and swivel and, and figure yeah. out how to go about that. Um, you know, so I feel very fortunate, really, that, um, and I guess same in your business, David, that we can change very easily. There's no massive infrastructure to change, and yeah. you know, the number of people we're talking about is relatively small, so we're in a good space compared to a lot of other companies, I think. But tell me, obviously, you spend a lot of time in doing bids and tender responses. What opportunities do you see in that marketplace as a result of what's going on right now? I think um, I was working with a client last week who's, um, beginning to think differently about tendering being a space to actually go and play. You know, there, I think there's a perception in particularly in the smaller business communities that, that that's not a space that is open to them or is a, play, a wise space to play. And um, the company I was talking to actually make um, bespoke suits. And so they have a wedding um, clothing manufacturing business. They've got all the factories in place and they kind of think, of, what, what can we do with that? And, and what they ended up, I helped them put a tender together for one of the, uh, for Victoria Police actually, to try right. to help make their dress uniforms for their top flight officers. So, yep. you know, so there's kind of, uh, I guess it's just thinking differently. It's not for the faint hearted going into the, you know, new tendered market space and you need yep. to kind yep. of do it, do it carefully and pick the right opportunities. But I think um, those opportunities are there for businesses. And in these times when it's tricky, why not, why not look around and see how can you, cut and dice the assets that you have to hand and use them differently. And mm. I think last year there was something like $600 billion worth of tendering, tendered services wow. that came out into the Australian market. And that's just from the government space, right? And so there's gotta be stuff in there for a lot of bit more businesses than are playing at the moment. So what you're saying is there's probably tender opportunities are available now to some companies that they couldn't ac access prior to this, this economic shift. Absolutely, or they might might not have thought about it. And and whilst I'm I'm not an advocate of just plugging into the tender websites and going for anything that comes out, um, yeah. if the if government or other private organisations are a source of potential clients, then mm -hmm. 
it's time to find those clients and go and engage with them, particularly while you've got the time to do it. You know, yeah. if you want to go into a different market, you don't just rock up, do some tenders and hope for the best. You kind of work for the organizations that are, find out who's in there, yeah. who's buying in the marketplace and how do I, how do you connect, you know, so that the tender comes later, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So tell me in terms of your own business, what are your priorities right now? My priorities are um, changing the nature of my training materials from online materials to, to things that can work in the, sorry, not on, from face-to-face -face driven materials and workshops to things that can work in the online space. Yeah. Um, working out my new markets. Um, one of the great benefits of the, the departure of the physical environment is I can now go play in the UK and the US mm -hmm. and as well as other parts of Australia. And yep. so just getting your head around the opportunities that are around is enormous. And it makes a big difference, doesn't it? Because we've cut down on the cost of travel and logistics and just becoming accessible to, rather than just Victorian market, you've now got the whole of Australia, which almost triples the market capacity for a service like yours. Absolutely. And whilst you, your reach six months ago was by and large in Melbourne and a bit of work in Sydney and so on, yep. now it's because everything can be done online and people are, we're all getting really good at using all the skills that we've had on our desktops for years, but we're all yeah, getting yeah. a lot better at um, using them. And, and I, th I find the technology is beginning to dissolve out of the way. You know, the number of meetings that start on time now, everyone's got their cameras on, all the microphones are in the right space. Yeah. You know, everyone's logged in. It's just people are just getting used to it. And, yeah. and my, I'm, my tip is it's not going to go back. Um, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there, there's some... Some clients that I'm working for are kind of major corporate organizations in the telecom space. And they're, they're saying things like, you know, in a year's time, 70% of their workforce will stay at home and 30% yep. will come back into an actual office of some sort. And, and that's a seismic shift in the workplace. And not only that, but the, you know, the, the infrastructure that business needs to, um, to operate and that cities need to provide companies, you know, it's um, yeah, very much so. Let me ask you personally, have you had any lessons taken out of this environment? Have you learned anything personally? I do you know what the biggest, um, biggest learning I've had is I've revalued things that are important. And I've, I've heard this a lot. Um, I find myself talking to my parents who are based in the UK a lot more than I used to. Um, yeah. I value clients. <laughs> it sounds terrible to say it, but um, I think it's, it's made me take care of what I've got and appreciate yeah. what I've got a lot more, I think. And, we all get on the rabbit run, don't we? And we're kind of um, chasing stuff. And I think the, the big lesson for me is I'm a very fortunate human being and um, you know, it makes me thankful. Yeah, fantastic. Nothing like a bit of gratitude. I think sometimes we forget when we get in the busyness of things, don't we? Ah, oh, totally. Yeah, I think, um, and just you just sort of re reassess what's important and you know where you are. So um, and I, I'm not the first that has said that. You know, I, I hope that the whilst what's going on in the US and other parts of the world doesn't make you think this, but I think in the wider context, I, I hope that people hang on to kind of some of the goodwill and benevolence that's kind of come out of the back of this. I think there's a sort of a interesting shift in people's values occurring right now. Um, they're starting to realize that stuff's not as important as people and uh, you know, being present and having time with family and friends, as you just described, is, is, is more important than money to a large degree. So, it's about trading those things out. Well, you know, one of the things that's interesting in the tendering space is, you know, there's a, been a big sentiment to manufacture locally on the back of this. You yeah. Know, kind of, um, we've been beholden to other countries for key supply of key um, equipment and materials and things like that. It will be interesting to see how long that is maintained in the marketplace, you know, whether we continue to want to buy, in Aust buy from Australia yeah. or whether we... Uh, you know, whether the pursuit of driving out cost from the supply chain will, will send us back to our old ways. It'll be interesting to see. It will be, it will be. Let me ask you the best piece of business advice you've ever received. Well, funnily enough, that was from the, when I, I left my last company, a guy called Nigel Dennis, he said, Mark, whatever you do, look after your cash and look after your people. And, um, and he said, by and large, everything will, will be okay. So, <laughs> and I've, I think he's probably right. I think add a bit to, to your world, Dave, a bit of strategy and know what you're doing and where you're going is important. But those two fundamentals underpin everything, don't they? Yeah, yeah it's sage advice. I, I think, uh, you know, a lot of the things we talk about, it comes down to cash flow is king in business. And I also am a big prophesizer of, 
you know, to grow a business, you need good people. So finding and keeping good people is one of those secrets to success. Mm, absolutely. Uh, so spot on. Tommy, favourite book? Well, if you promise not to think that I should get out more, this is my favourite book. Um, Persuasive <laughs> Business Proposals by Tom Sun. <laughs> it looks like so, a uh, book too. <laughs> sorry? It looks like a big book as well. Yeah, it's huge. No, it's, um, but it, I, I was lucky enough to work with Tom Sun. He's one of the, the forefathers of bid writing globally. And, um, yep. and that book basically has got, if you ever are going to get into tendering and you can't sleep at night, that's the book to read. It's kind of, um, it's got everything in it. And I still use it every yep. day that I'm not yep. working. So what's the, what's <laughs> the best, uh, what, what sort of, give me, a, give, give me a message out of that book. Uh, the favorite, uh, the favorite part of the book is this it, it thing called the persuasive paradigm, and I'll, I'll look it up for you. And it's a simple structure that you can use to um, organize your communications. Right. And he calls it the nose structure. So it goes needs, outcomes, solutions, evidence. Really simple, right? And then this book's full of simple goodies like that that you can use in literally every walk of business life. So um, awesome. great. I haven't read that one before. It has to go on the list now. <laughs> But um, just the last question as we start to wrap up, what's your number one piece of advice that you give to a business owner right now? That's a, there's a lot, isn't there? I think, my, I think the thing that I, I'll share that I did was um, revisit every assumption that underpinned my business. Mm. You know, for, for example, one of my founding principles was face-to-face -face works better than not. And so I went back and thought that through and, and worked out, is that really the case? And... And I think that's the, you know, a lot of people kind of build businesses based on assumption and what and belief. And I, I think it's a healthy exercise to go back. So What's changed? Just, like yeah. all of those fundamental assumptions and, and beliefs that underpin how you run your business and, and how it works. What's changed in this world? And how, how do you need to change with it? Yeah, because when you talk about that, right, people defend their beliefs. And the challenge I have around this is beliefs aren't either right or wrong. They either work or they don't work. So what used to serve you may not serve you anymore. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means it doesn't work anymore. So oh, what you described there, we call, I call zero-based thinking. And it's really saying, knowing what I know now, if I had to start again, what would I do differently? And with the market shifting as much as it has, there's a great opportunity for reassessment. So that's, mm. a, that's a great piece of advice. And you know what? It's, um, it's liberating. Because mm. with the, some of the models I'd had in programs that I'd built, there was a face-to-face -face aspect to them. And I was always thinking, yeah. well, how's geography going to come into play? Right. Here. You know, teams are all over the world these days, all over the country, and people are doing this, and we'll be doing this more and more through online events. So, you know, can't you have these kind of beliefs that uh, how well, how am I going to get around that? And and here we are, the mm -hmm. problems disappeared, and um, and it's opened up a whole load, load of other opportunities in its place. Yeah, so that's great. Look, uh, very conscious of time, Mark. I just wanted to thank you so much for coming on the call today. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure and I uh, look forward to catching up with you again soon. That'd be great. All right. Cheers.